Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be sharing a video clip with you that is um, a court case um, where a young man is sitting before the judge. The judge is the woman you see on the screen here. Um, it is an interesting exchange as you are going to see, but this judge literally has to put a grandma in her place for coddling a grown man. And at some point uh, during this process, uh, she says, you're raising trifling men. Now, you're going to hear the contents of everything that's going on. Um, I want you to sit back and take a listen at everything. And, of course, look at uh, the gestures on the, the grandma's face, the judge's face, even uh, the attorney representing the young man. Look at everybody. Everyone is really trying their best to, to deal with this situation with this young man. But this judge is not having it. She's, she's like, look, he's grown. And all I see is folk coddling him, right? Anyway, before I get off into all of that, I want you to listen to the exchange yourself. Um, it is very, very telling of the condition that our people are in today. Take a listen and I'll be right back. So, Your Honor, um, so what Mr. King wanted to share uh, with the court was that um, He's been kind of proactive. So he said that he's completed um, some defensive driving courses, um, some anger management courses and things like that. But we understand that the court's main concern is the alcohol. So um, if there is perhaps any sort of monitoring that um, Mr. King can have while he's out of uh, jail um, or perhaps testing, um, he would be agreeable to something like that. Um, but we just don't I feel like him being in being in jail. I I personally I don't believe that he's going to be a danger. He's been um, he's got the support of his grandmother who's here um, in court with us today. Um, and like I said, he's he's gainfully employed and he does have a child and he does have a lot to lose. And he understands that, especially having well, Miss Han. It's not necessarily that I think he's going to be a danger per se. What I what I what I the concern that I have is that he's gotten two subsequent charges, one of which definitely in, involves alcohol since he got a DUI. And so all of these things coming into play, you can present all of this to me as the reason why I shouldn't put you in a jail. But none of that kept you from getting two subsequent charges after a DUI. I don't understand what's going on. Like now I'm supposed to feel bad. Oh, he's got a two year old. Well, that was your choice. Nobody told you to go out there and you got pending charges and your life is probably not stable and you out here having babies. Um, I'm not a proponent of just willy nilly having children and then using them to try and play on the court's heart strings because I feel like children deserve the absolute best that we can give them. And when we just out here having them and then trying to figure it out on the back end, I I'm not a proponent of that. Mm -mm. Um, and I, I see your grandmama sitting back there with her hands over her face, you know, praying for you and everything. And I think that's a good thing. But I think that you need to take some personal responsibility. You're 25. You've chosen to have a child and become a parent. Um, but you also have committed allegedly um, three. You have three different pending char pending cases, not charges. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pending charges before the court, and over the course of two years. And so, I don't understand why I should now let you out again and risk you getting another charge. Because if you stay in jail, you'll come up next on the trial calendar. We can go ahead and try these cases and get them done. We're going to try them back to back to back. So. Um, one second, Your Honor. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. If I could just say one last thing on behalf of um, Mr. King. Um, 
you know, obviously we still would like for him to be released, but, um, you know, I, again, I know that your honor is concerned about alcohol. Mr. King hasn't had any, any infractions involving alcohol or any issues with alcohol, um, at least since April of 2022. So it's going on almost two years. August of 2022. Well, I think the, I think the last case involving alcohol, your honor was the, uh, one inning in O. 297 is my understanding. You go um, tell me he was stone cold sober when he went over there to the same person from the April incident. All right, I'm gonna let you have that one. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, but so, Your Honor, M Mr. King and his grandmother was also uh, kind of chiming in as well, as let me know that there aren't any concerns, at least. We don't believe that there are any concerns that the court should have about alcohol. Um, he's kind of been on the straight and narrow for the last over the last year, and so we would like the opportunity for him to get out of jail and kind of fight these charges from the outside, um, because he does maintain with me that he's not guilty on all of the cases, um, and that's kind of what I was trying to explain to him as to why we won't go into the details of that um, here today as to what happened in each of those cases. Um, but without doing that, he, he does want the court to to release him. All right. <clears throat> if I release him, he's going to test every two weeks for substances. If he misses a test, he comes back to jail. If yeah. he tests positive, he comes back to jail. That's fine, Your Honor. All right, draw up the order. Thank you. He'll go to um, the, uh, he'll make an appointment with the um, probation office and he'll test every two weeks. Um, he misses, them, like if he misses a test, he's coming back to jail. If he tests positive, he's coming back to jail for any substance, alcohol or anything else. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You can go back with the sheriff's office, Mr. King. He's not to have any contact, no contact, not um, social media, not text message, phone, nothing with Frazier, K.N. Frazier. Any contact with her, he comes back to jail. Thank you, Your Honor. That's the baby mama, I take it. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Okay, no, still, because I don't, I, I'm assuming that he hasn't married this woman or legitimized that child. Um, not to my knowledge, Your Honor. We're going to start doing stuff the right way. Until those things happen, he is not the legal parent of that child. If folk just want to come out here and just be having babies, that's on them. But uh, understand the situation it puts you in when you don't have those things in place. And so, no, he's not to have any any contact with the baby, not through the grandmother. Don't The grandmother can't call her. No, Y'all can't see the baby unless a uh, court... Uh, unless the Superior Court of Clayton County or the court where the baby resides um, decides that there's a visitation that has been set up due to a legitimation um, petition that has been filed. So this is the sacrifice you're going to make. When we start doing things the right way, then th then we don't have these issues. But no contact with Kay and Frazier or the child of Kay and Frazier. No, Grandma. No. Come on up, ma'am. See, your, your grandson is in this situation because somebody's always uh, taken up for him and he's not getting responsibility for the things he's doing. I understand that, Your Honor, and, and thank you for allowing me to speak. But what we did, uh, his mother and I, when they were ha having their spats, we only go pick up the baby now or me or his mother and you shouldn't have to do that because they should be grown enough if they're grown enough to have a baby they should be grown enough to co-parent but anytime the grandmama and the mama have to get involved in transporting the baby because they can't get along that tells me that they're immature and shouldn't have had the baby in the first place so he needs to grow up and no well, i'm not gonna facilitate that no ma'am well actually it was his idea i don't to, care to not to have the interaction I don't care. He had a baby with that woman. If he can't now co-parent with her, that tells me something about the fact that they shouldn't have even had a baby together. So no, y'all can't have any contact with her until such time as that baby is legitimized through the courts. And what, what court do you do that? Superior court. And that's not your job, ma'am. That's I'm, I'm his just job. Asking, I'm, I just like to have the information. I, I get that. But we are raising trifling men. 
We're doing so much for them that we're not raising men. We're raising little boys that some other woman is going to be burdened with taking care of. Even when he, if he gets back with Kay and Frazier, she going to have to do everything for him because you and his mama are coddling him. There was a time in this country where once you left your parents' house, you were responsible and you had to make your way and be responsible. Every successful person I know, including myself, you get from your parents instructions when you finish high school, hey, you you, I don't know what you're going to do. It's college, military, work, but you can't live here. And we are so busy coddling. I, I know he has a place now, but we're so busy coddling, especially young men. We seem to be wanting to raise women to be responsible. You got to go out and get a job. You got to do this. You got to do that. But parents continue to coddle these young men. And so they end up not being responsible for themselves or anybody else. He's a parent now, so he's grown. So anything that happens on his behalf or his child's behalf, he has to handle it. Y'all need to stop stepping in. I, I respect what you just said, but in the case- Don't, of, No buts. I, I, he takes care, he stepped in and is taking care of her daughter that is four. So? And my family and all everybody that knows him respects him as a good father. So I cannot let his, it be said that he's not a good parent. I didn't say he wasn't a good parent. I said he they weren't mature enough to co-parent. I recognize that, but I, I do want it to be on record that he is. No, I didn't say he wasn't a good parent and there is a path to him being able to parent his child. I told you what it is. But what I'm saying to you is you and his mama can't live his life for him. And as long as y'all are doing for him, then he won't be able to do for himself. Thank you for that, Your Honor. I'm just saying you and you recognize what I'm saying. When you left your parents' house, how old were you? Eighteen. And did they did they say you you never went back? Did you? Never went back. Okay, this man is 25, and he, he, I'm gonna tell you what my grandmother said. My grandmother raised 13 children, and you know what she said? She said I have never had to stand bond for any of them. But you know what she also said? If you get a if you do something, don't call me. She's right. I raised you to be. I ready to do the things that you should you should know how to do. And so of her 13 children, none of them had to stand in a courtroom and, or call come get them or call my grandfather to come get them because she, I've raised you. So now you're on your own to be responsible the way I taught you to be. And we are we have gotten so far away from that. We got kids now telling their parents off, oh, taking their parents' vehicles, um, uh, hitting and 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 interacting with their parents in such negative ways. But the, at a minimum, we're not raising children to be responsible. At 18, your parents said, "That's it." And you went out and you made your way and you look reasonably successful. Now, I don't know you, but you don't look like you struggle. And what I'm telling you is until you let somebody get out there and do what they need to do. And you looking at me in this role, but I'm gonna tell you right now, when I went to college, my parents was like, okay, you made it into college. All those student loans, I had to pay. When I went to law school, I had to pay. I was working two jobs in college and going to school, two jobs and going to school. There have been other times in my life when I worked two jobs and gone to school. So what I'm saying to you is he can do if y'all step out of the way and make him do it. But don't keep coddling him and we gonna facilitate seeing the baby and we gonna make sure cause y'all can't co-parent cause y'all fighting each other that we gonna make it easy to go back and forth. Go to court, he can go to court, set up a visitation schedule and get a superior court judge to determine how this is gonna happen. But in all things, He's going to be a parent for the rest of his life. So if he can't get it right now at the beginning, when it's easy, it's it's not going to get any easier. It's I, not. And 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 with all due respect, Your Honor, I don't condone. I didn't help you get into a mess. I can't help you get out, but I do support helping you through it. That's the way I look at it with my kids and my grandkids. I got you. But what I'm saying to you is remember how you made it. 
and people think it's harsh. But when your parents said, you 18 now, you on your own, you might have struggled. But right now, if you face with any situation in your life, you're going to figure out how to get it, how to make it work. Because yeah. you've had that experience. We don't let our kids struggle. So when they get out there, the first thing they're going to do is turn back to mama. Well, what am I going to do now? Well, if you struggled when you first got out there and made your way and realized you got to work, you got to pay bills, you got to find a place to stay, you got to maintain a place to stay. When you do those things, it makes you responsible and able to handle whatever challenge comes your way. But as long as the parents are stepping in and, keep, and keeping these 20 something, 20 something, I don't even give a little grace for the 20s, but the 30s, the 40s, you know, I got parents who carrying these people on their back and they're coming in and, and raising discord in their households. We have got to stop coddling these young men. He went out there, he had a baby. So if he, he chosen to give up his uh, his 20s um, and his carefree lifestyle to be a parent, then he's got to do what it takes to do it right. And if that means going to court and legitimizing this child, raise, getting the money up to do what he needs to do, then he needs to do that. But nobody's telling him to go out here and just have babies without thinking about the consequences of what that means. So what... Is the birth certificate not legitimate? No, ma'am. I, I can't tell you because I don't do that kind of law. But what I can tell you is generally, no, you don't find in the birth certificate does not legitimize a child. It may be biologically acknowledged as his child, but th under the law, no, not until they either they were married at the time of the child's birth or within a certain period of time after the child's birth or they go through the legitimation process in the superior court where the child resides. Okay. So I'm just saying, and I understand you and mama want to help him and y'all want to see the baby. Y'all might have to take some time, but y'all can't contact this woman on his behalf. Oh, we miss Christmas. I still have her stuff. Okay. The baby will get it. The baby don't know it's Christmas. It's two years, two year old. She'll get it when she gets it. Thank you. All right. Okay, y'all, somebody give that judge a standing ovation. Uh, she just laid it down. She laid it out. Now, young people today are so disrespectful. They out here doing what they want to do. They have no respect for authority, no respect for order. And like the judge put it out there, she said, you got folk out here making babies. And they don't have the means to take care of these babies. But then they look to mama, father, uh, sister, brother, grandma, grandpa, everybody to come and bail them out. So this judge, she puts it, she lays it down. And she puts that grandmother in her place for coddling this grown man. It's too much of this happening, right? It's too much of it happening. And she says, we are raising trifling men out here. See, this is, the, this is the kind of stuff folk don't want to talk about. They don't want to talk about this at all. But the fact remains is these young men are not um, behaving like men, but they sure know how to make a baby though, right? And these young women, they, they show sure know how to make themselves available and you can't even get along with someone. This judge pointed out, why are y'all even together? Why are you even trying to make a baby and you're not capable of raising one, right? See, everyone wants to enjoy the uh, the pleasures of sin, but they don't understand that there are lasting, lasting effects to, to all this stuff you're doing out here. And these mothers and grandmothers who are coddling these grown men, you've created a situation out here that other people have to deal with now. You've created this. And these absent fathers who don't even want to be in their children's lives why are you even making babies? If you don't love the mother, if you don't have no intentions of being in her life, why make a baby with her in the first place? See, everybody wants to pass around the blame. Oh, it's the woman's fault. She shouldn't have opened her legs. It's the man's fault. He shouldn't have did this, that, and the third. It's everybody's fault. She opened them. He, he did what he did. Boom. Nine months later, there's a baby. Everyone knows what it takes to make a baby, but no one is avoiding that very act. And this is why this judge had to speak the way that she did, because of all of this disorder and this dysfunction. And no one wants to 
accept the blame for anything. No one wants to. All of this coddling and cradling, all of this rump shaking and baby making, if you are not adult enough to handle the consequences of your actions, then you should put it back in your pants and leave it there until it's ready to be a husband to someone, vice versa, women, until you are ready for the responsibility of marriage and raising a child. Because I like what the judge said here, people out here willy-nilly making babies and not even thinking about that child's life. At the end of the day, the child suffers. And no one likes this hard talk at all. Everyone wants you to coddle their emotions and their feelings. Tiptoe around my, my feelings and my emotions. Or everyone wants to blame something and somebody. But at that very moment when you and Mr. Man or Mrs. Woman is, or not, not Mrs., okay, because a lot of folk ain't getting married. When y'all are in the sack, man and woman, doing what it takes to make a baby, that's when you start, that's when you need to start thinking, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because I'm not responsible enough to, to have a child, so I shouldn't be doing anything that could make a child. But see, that's too much right, that's too much like right for people to start thinking in advance. They say, well, you know what, we're doing it, we go, let's go ahead and get it out of the way and we'll think about the consequences later. But see, those consequences end up in court sometimes. Sometimes those consequences end up uh, knocking somebody else over the head. Sometimes those consequences end up robbing somebody down the line. Sometimes those consequences end up abusing someone down the line or just wreaking havoc in the community. Your decision to make babies willy-nilly can become someone else's problem. We have got to get it together as the so-called black community. The Bible tells us to cry aloud, spare not and lift up our, our voices like trumpets in Zion. We have got to get this stuff together. If you are an adult male or an adult female, stop looking to others. Stop looking to others to take care of your situations. That grandmother and that mother should not have to be going back and forth as the in-between person to make sure that he sees his child. But like the judge said, go ahead and make it official. Do what you got to do. If this is so important to you, handle your business. Go through the proper channels in which the proper channels to begin with wouldn't have, would have been not to even do this in the first place with a young woman that you had no intentions of being married to. You, you decide after the fact that you can't get along with her after y'all done laid in the bed and y'all done uh, did what you did. Now you have a baby. Now, oh, we can't get along. Well, that should have been known before you did grown up stuff in the bed. Anyway, I want you all to tell me what you think of this in the, co in the comment section. Was this judge a bit too harsh? Should she have softened up a little bit and coddled him right along with his mother and his grandmother? Huh? And we ain't going to even talk about the father. There was no mention of that young man's father anywhere because we all know the story and how sad it is. I don't know what the, the situation is with his father or not, but we all know that a lot of households, not just in the black community either, I'm starting to see more and more where here in America, um, there's no dad in the house. In America, no dad in the house but specifically in the black community. Stop making these babies willy-nilly like this judge said and think about the consequences of your actions because like she said, if you keep, if you end up back in here, that's going to be it. I'm done with this. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section. As always, keep it tight and keep it right. But until next time, I'm out. We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share it like this video, and with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel, and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.